Okay, in this particular lesson, what we're going to look at is distance, rate, and time problems uh, having to do with rational equations. Uh, these are a little bit more difficult or just uh, more variant than the, the previous lesson where we did combined work problems. So, um, But there are still some techniques that are definitely going to help us solve these type of problems. Um, a few pointers and tips. Uh, one is that a table is always helpful for distance, rate, and time problems. Uh, you will always also want to label your columns distant rate and time uh, generally what's going to happen is you're solving for a specific rate so what we're going to do is let x or r represent the rate uh, and recall a few relationships or formulas having to do with distance rate and time uh, one thing that is important is to remember that distance is the same as rate times time or in other words if we want to isolate time or solve for time uh, time would be equivalent to uh, distance over rate. Okay, uh, so let's we're going to do a couple problems together. This first problem says uh, the Northern Manitoba Trappers Festival, held in the past, originated in 1916. A championship dog race has always been a part of the festivities. In the early days, the race was nonstop from the pass to Flin Flon and back. In one particular race, the total distance was 140 miles. Conditions were excellent on the way to Flin Flon. However, bad weather caused the winner's average speed to decrease by six miles per hour on the return trip. The total time for the trip was eight and a half hours. What was the winning dog team's average speed on the way to Flin Flon? <clears throat> so a few things is to recognize uh, what we're looking at here, what we're investigating here, since there are different rates uh, on the way and the way back from Flin Flon, is that a couple of parts that we're investigating is the way to Flin Flon and back from F Flin Flon. And again, we're going to let, uh, maybe I'll let X represent the rate. And that is the rates in this particular case are going to be in miles per hour. <clears throat> All right, the distance um, to and back from Flin Flon are identical. Uh, you'll see if, if, uh, the, if the total distance is 140 miles, then in each direction it's going to be 70 miles. Um, so the total distance is 140. Uh, the rate in this case... <clears throat> and I should mention that we're looking and we're solving for the rate to Flin Flon. So the rate to Flin Flon is X, and the way back it says bad weather caused the winner's average speed to decrease by 6 miles per hour. So in this case, the return flight is X minus 6. Uh, the total rate, we don't know. We can just leave that uh, alone. As far as the time goes, we know uh, that the total time was... 8.5 hours <clears throat> and what we also know is that based on the previous uh, part of the lesson is that time is also equal to distance over rate so if I take the distance and put it over the rate what I'm going to have is the time is 70 over x and in the other particular case on the way back from Flin Flon is 70 over x minus 6. Uh, the last part of these type of problems is coming up with the equation. And what our equation is in this particular case, often having to do with the times, uh, the relationship between the times is that the way to Flin Flon and the way back from Flin Flon when added together is equal to the total time of 8.5. So our particular uh, equation in this case is that <clears throat> 70 over x, the way to Flin Flon, plus 70 over x minus 6, the way back from Flin Flon, uh, is equal to 8.5. And I'll make that a rational expression by putting it over 1. Uh, in this particular case, what we're looking for, uh, we can first of all state our non-permissible values. Our non-permissible values, uh, if you want to look at um, previous lessons, uh, you can see uh, the 6.4 lesson, how to solve rational equations. Uh, the next step is to identify our common denominator. Our common denominator in this case is going to be a unique x and an x minus 6. Um, <clears throat> so to create that common denominator, I would multiply my first expression by x minus 6. My second expression has to be multiplied by x. And my third expression has to be multiplied by x and x minus 6. Okay, uh, so in this particular case, what we have is, in our first numerator, 70 times x minus 6 plus 70x is equal to, in our third numerator, 8.5x 
times x minus 6. Uh, and these are all over a common denominator. And what we learned in the rational expression or solving rational equations lesson is after we multiply both sides by our common denominator, uh, we can cancel out those common factors. And it's just remaining an equation of our numerators. Uh, so in this particular case, we're solving the equation. 70 times x minus 6 plus 70x is equal to 8.5x times x minus 6. Uh, so as I expand this and then solve the, the uh, related quadratic equation, what we have in this particular case is 70x minus 420 plus 70x is equal to 8.5x squared <clears throat> minus... 51x. Uh, so as I, what I'm going to do is make one side equal to 0. Okay, uh, so this side is now equal to 0. So we have 0 is equal to 8.5x squared uh, and negative 140 is going to be minus 191x plus 420. <clears throat> Uh, this, to me, doesn't initially appear to be factorable, so what I'm going to do is use the quadratic formula. Okay, uh, so in this particular case, we have that x is equal to negative b, which is negative negative 191, uh, plus or minus the square root of b squared, negative 191 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 8.5, times c, which is 420 all over a denominator of 2 times a, which is 2 times 8.5. So as I start simplifying this, uh, what I'll do is get a rate. So I have 191 plus or minus the square root of <clears throat> 3, 6, 4, 8, 1 minus Fourteen thousand two hundred and eighty, all over, and two times eight point five is seventeen. Uh, so if I simplify, and then I'll get to my two solutions. Uh, if I simplify, I get two. So thirty-six thousand four hundred and eighty-one minus fourteen thousand two hundred and eighty. That gives me two 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 zero one. So I have uh, x is equal to one ninety-one plus or minus the square root of two 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 zero one all over 17. And as long as we're careful, uh, I'll represent the two answers on my calculator. My two solutions are either 191 plus the square root of 22201. I'll hit equals and then divide by 17. So it's either 20 or 191 minus the square root of 22201. I'll hit equals and divide by 17, and I'm left with <coughs> roughly 2.5. Okay, uh, so as far as our solution goes, we need to see if they make sense. So on the way to Flin Flon, our solutions are either 20 miles per hour or 2.5 miles per hour. Uh, both at the, at the time seem to make sense. But if you go six miles per hour slower back from Flin Flon, can you go six miles per hour slower than two and a half? That's impossible. So our solution in this particular case is going to be only 20 miles per hour. Okay, uh, let's do one more problem. If you'd like to pause and try the second problem on your own or try and set it up, you may want to do that. Uh, this next problem is slightly different, but it's still a distance, rate, and time problem. Uh, what this says is a train has a scheduled run of 160 kilometers between two cities in Saskatchewan. If the average speed is decreased by 16 kilometers per hour, the run will take half an hour longer. What is the average speed of the train? So in this case, again, we're going to let x equal uh, the average speed of the train. Okay, uh, So in this particular case, what we have is uh, the faster rate, or, or the distance total is 160, whether you're going the slower or the faster rate. Uh, the faster rate we will just have being x, and the slower rate is if it's decreased by 16. Uh, so as far as our time, again, being distance over rate, what we're going to have is this is 160 over x, and this, as far as the slower one goes, is 160 over x minus 16. 
Uh, in this particular case, it's a little bit different as far as the relationship between the two. They don't have a total sum of time. What they have is a relationship that one takes half an hour longer. So what it says is that this here is half an hour longer. So in other words, if I want to represent uh, <clears throat> an equation relating these two, I would have to add half an hour to the faster time in order for them to be equal. So that's what I'm going to set this up as, is that these times, instead of them having a sum of something, is that 160 over x plus half an hour would be equal to the slower time of 160 over x minus 16. Uh, now we can solve this again as a rational <clears throat> equation. Our non-permissible values, x cannot equal 0, x can also not equal 16. As far as our common denominator goes, our common denominator uh, is a unique x and a unique x minus 16 factor. Uh, so in this particular case, uh, we'd have to represent an x minus 16 factor, or add an x minus 16 factor to the first rational expression, add an x and an x minus 16 factor to the second rational expression, and to our third rational expression, we would just have to multiply it by x. Okay. So as far as our numerators go, we have 160 times x plus 6 <clears throat> plus 1 times x, which is just x, times x minus 16. And that is equal to our numerator of 160 times x, which is 160x. And those are all over common denominators now. Uh, after multiplying both sides by that common denominator, we'll now have a quadratic equation of the numerators. So uh, we're left with 160, and I'll just expand this right away, uh, x <clears throat> plus 960 plus x squared minus 16x is equal to 160x. So in this particular case, uh, what I'll do is make one side equal to 0 and solve the related quadratic equation. So we're left with, in this case, uh, x squared. These 160x's appear to cancel out. So it's x squared minus 16x plus 960 uh, is equal to 0. And we could try and factor that. Uh, if we'd like to try and factor it, we could think of two values. <clears throat> that add to negative 16 and multiply to 960. So they have to be rough opposites. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what those would be. Uh, let's just try and see if we can find out. Um, if I take maybe 960 and divide it by 30, I get 32, so that's not quite right. Uh, maybe if I take 960 and divide it by 28, <clears throat> that's not right either. Uh, what you'll notice is that 24 and 40 in this case, I'm just trying a whole bunch, they differ by 16. You could use a quadratic formula, but I've come up with this here. Uh, so what we'll have is that it's going to be minus 40 and plus 24. So that gives us two solutions. Either x is equal to 40. Again, you could use a quadratic formula where a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 16, and c is equal to 960 if you aren't comfortable with factoring, and x is equal to negative 24. Well, if we investigate the fact that this is a word problem and see which one makes sense, uh, is it possible for the rate to be negative 24, um, in this case, kilometers per hour? That's just impossible. So the average rate here would be 40 kilometers per hour.